So, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Jim Nash. I'm the Ward 3 City Councilor and the Chair of the Transportation and Parking Commission. Uh, this is the October 16th, 2018 meeting. Um, the meeting is being both audio and video recorded. And uh, now we'll do introductions. I'm, as I said, Jim Nash, uh, the Chair. Jean-Louis Shara, uh, the Vice Chair. Alan Burson, Planning Board. Gary Hartwell, Citizen. Jody Casper, <coughs> Chief of Police. Nancy Forrestal, Treasurer, Collector, Parking Departments. Jamie Albert, Fisher, Citizen. Don Moscalia, Director of the DPW. Dave Pomerantz, Director of Central Services. Devin Bruce, Citizen. Maggie Chan, DPW. Jeff Capital, DPW. Okay, thank you everybody. And uh, Wayne let us know that he wasn't going to be here today. And I would like to welcome Devin Bruce to our group here. Uh, Devin has served on this committee, the planning board. What other committees, Devin? Uh, CPC was fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, bicycle and parking still. So she, and, um, and that, um, what is it, National Transportation and we're, we're ending that phase, that's why we're trying But that, that was your phase, that you come here with a very uh, esteemed background around um, uh, knowing how traffic and accidents occur. So, um, so we welcome her. Um, at this point, we welcome public comment, and um, we have somebody here, uh, and you're here to uh, listen in or ask questions about the uh, changes in Florence that have to do with Chestnut Street. Specifically Chestnut, yes. Okay, great. And um, let's see, that is right at the top of the agenda. And if you have a question, feel re free to raise your hand. And if you'd like to make a comment as well, just let us know. Let us know. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, have people had a chance to review the minutes from the previous meeting? And do we, to some, would somebody like to make a motion to accept those minutes? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? No discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Was that aye. aye. Was that aye. Yeah, so moved. <laughs> it counts. Okay. You get that credit. Okay, and um, thank you, Beth, for, um, so any uh, any nays, any abstentions? I have abstention. Two abstentions. Okay. Um, at this point, we get reports from uh, departments and subcommittees. Um, and often we lead off with the DPW report and um, Director Lascalia. Chesterfield Road has been paved. Uh, contractor will be finishing up the project by completing driveways and um, restoring women's seed. Um, final paving for Pleasant Street, Hampton Ave, Fulton Ave, Wright Avenue, and Cook Avenue is scheduled for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. That's October 22nd through 24th. Parking will be prohibited on those streets during paving. And during the, during the paving of Pleasant Street on Monday and Tuesday, that's the 22nd and 23rd, only one-way northbound traffic will be allowed. Southbound traffic will be detoured to Crafts Avenue, Old South Street, and Conn Street to get to I-91. We will be putting out very robust communication around this uh, probably tomorrow. So you will see a detour map and a description of what this is going to look like. And I thank Jody and the police department for working with us to um, deal with the logistical issues that this is going to create. Uh, crack ceiling. Crack ceiling for various streets is scheduled for early November. Pavement markings. Uh, contractor came through and striped double yellow center lines and fog lines. Um, the lane lines, turn arrows, speed hump markings, and other hand work is going to be completed before November 15th. Um, and finally, good news, the Clemson Street Bridge was removed. The repairs are complete. Thank you. Um, in, in terms of the um, getting the word out around the detouring and all of that, has the, is, has the paper been contacted? or They will be. 
they will be. Okay. Thank you. Can I ask a question about pavement markings? Or does that include the Route 9 where you turn left to go into Leeds? Oh, up by the VA? Yeah, is that part of the name? Just past the VA. Yeah, is that part of the name? Just past the VA, you turn left to go into Leeds. Um, right on the I'm not sure that that piece is included. I don't know. All right, is there a problem there? Well, it's a tough left turn. There's traffic coming toward the city on Route 9, and uh, <clears throat> there, there's almost no uh, lines left on the street, so it's kind of dangerous. If it's not part of the contract, we'll take care of it. Yeah, it bears looking at it. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, any other reports from city department? Okay. Um, we have another member of the public here, and you're here for Wilder Place. For Wilder Place. Are you okay. doing anything with that today? Uh, yes, we are going to have a discussion about that. I don't have the agenda. Is it down a ways? Or? It's down a ways. Um, Can I say two quick things and just let it go with that? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm in 15 minute parking. It's a problem. <laughs> so you'd like to speak now and it would take me about two minutes, one minute. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, uh, 19 Wild Place, Dave Bergengren. I was here before the other one, and I think you got all our input. Uh, so the only two things I want to say is, if you're not going to consider uh, residents only parking for the street, which didn't sound like you were, uh, just I'd like to make one more plea for one, you're going to do one side, but one parking lot per lot, if that's possible. That's my first one. My second comment is, I hope, I hope, I hope you're going to do something about that parking place on Main Street where the intersection of Wilder Place comes out to the right and where you've got a parking place. It starts, stops about three or, starts three or four feet from the curb, which I don't believe is right, but I, I know it was dangerous. I mean, I've been driving out of that, that street for years now, and it's dangerous. And they only park trucks there almost now because they have a, a, a construction place in Cooper's Corner. And I came out of there just now, and it's, it's extremely hard to get to make it your way out there. You have to inch out, inch out, inch out, and it's very tough. I hope you're going to get rid of that parking place because it's dangerous. I'm here to say it. Some, somebody takes notes for these things. <laughs> Something's going to happen there eventually. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, so you're going to discuss it. And is yes, it's on the agenda. If you'd like, if you want to stick around for a little bit, we can move it up on the agenda. We have. Uh, I'm in no hurry. Okay. Um, so <laughs> I'm not I, well, I'm going to go move my car, space. and uh, I got to be here anyway. So maybe I will come by and see. Well, how about this? Are. When you come back, that's when we'll. Oh, great. See if we then can I'll be back. Right. Thank you. We're nice and hospitable here. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, the, uh, so the, the first thing is the uh, is the discussion of 18.125, an ordinance to amend Chapter 312-104 of the Code Book, parking changes for downtown Florence concerning Main Street, Maple Street, and Chestnut. Um, do you have the document? Um, so, uh, would people like me to read this, or? Everybody has copies? Okay. So, um, uh, so I can, uh, I can summarize what's going on here. So first of all, these are the, the designated parking areas in downtown Florence that uh, currently are all uh, one hour time limit and that we're moving with as part of uh, the overall parking plan and to have this our parking in Florence consistent with what we're doing downtown is that we're changing 
the, the time limit for parking from one hour to two hours. So all of the, the parking on Main Street in downtown Northampton has been moved from one hour to two hour. We're doing the same thing in Florence. Uh, the uh, parking in Florence is unmetered, uh, uh, but it, the, that when people do park beyond the, the, the time limit there, they, they can get a ticket. The uh, enforcement does occur out there. Um, that the, um, interestingly, it, in terms of Chestnut, um, uh, Nancy and I were go, going over this yesterday, and it only if, uh, has to do with Chestnut when it's south of Main Street. So it's not, it's not, as far as this is concerned, and I think this is where your question is, so as it, as Chestnut goes northward past the pie bar, that's not a part of this, this change. I understand that. Okay. And um, so, did I get it right, Nancy? Or? Yes. All right. Um, the, um, other things to consider here is that the mayor has, uh, has met with the Florence Civic and Business Association. It's, it, it, it's part of his monthly meetings with uh, a number of neighborhood organizations around town. Uh, they, uh, they were fine with this change and um, that um, he feels he's done the outreach that he needs to do around this. So far, I haven't heard any concerns about whether or not uh, this should move forward. And um, so, I recorded myself, okay. So, um, do you have any thoughts you wanna share on this or? I'm actually more concerned with the other sign with your, um, I, I, I'm, I'm here mostly to hear what you're talking about. Um, where our, our continuing problem is, uh, has to do with the pie bar parking and it's the northerly part of Chestnut of, from Main Street, not the part that you're discussing this change to. Okay, so that's not on the agenda for I, this month. I month, understand, but I was I, interested I in, the lining, that in, the, in the B, the, the line, lining and striping, I wasn't sure whether that would have any, had held out any hope for us. What is here? There it is. Okay. It is there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we will discuss that in a moment. I'm sorry. So, um, as far as this particular ordinance here, is there any more discussion or questions? So, um, the, um, we're, we're looking to send this forward to council. Would somebody like to uh, make a motion. Oh, one other thing. that it, it already has been to legislative matters. It was at legislative matters last week. They reviewed it and they're sending it forward to council with a positive recommendation. This, uh, due to our quorum issues over the last few months, this lagged behind and we're behind on this. So we're hoping to do two readings on this on Thursday night to, to move this forward. Um, so, would somebody like to make a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion to uh, approve and send it forward as it's written and uh, put it up. Second. Okay. Is there any more discussion? Okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any nays? All right, so it's unanimous. Okay. Here we go, okay. Uh, discussion of line striping uh, parking spaces around the intersection of Chestnut and Main Street in Florence. Uh, this is on here because I received the communication from uh, Councillor Murphy. Uh, I, uh, several months ago, Councillor Murphy and I uh, walked around the, um, the, 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 the area in question around the pie bar and around uh, having to do with Cooper's Corner that there's um, that it's actually kind of complicated as to um, where people where where exactly people can park. Uh, Coopers has issues of trucks backing in, and um, and that they need um, 
they need to be that sometimes people are parking in the way of where the trucks need to maneuver to get into the loading dock and and there's a sense that um, that uh, parking is scarce in the area um, and that um, that uh, Councillor Murphy was requesting that we look into the idea of possibly line striping the area for parking uh, with the intention of where so people get a sense of what parking is actually there. Um, as we walk the area, there there is parking on, on Chestnut Street um, and that um, that could be available. Uh, there's also parking on Main Street that people kind of overlook because it, it's not clear. So directly across from the pie bar, there is actually parking space there, uh, but it's not clear to people. Um, also, as Councillor Murphy pointed out, that um, there are there's the possibility of parking spaces on the Pi Bar northerly side of Main Street, and it, it turns into Elm there some at some point. Anyway, that there's there's clearly more parking there. Um, that um, that he spoke of <clears throat> is it Middle Street in, in Florence? What's the, the the street that we did line strike? Yeah. middle and that um, that there was con there was a lot of controversy about there being enough parking there and that line striping actually really helped alleviate and clarify what the uh, the, the availability of parking there so um, his request was to um, have us discuss that um, and um, so that's why it's on the agenda and you wanted to speak to this I mean, sure. I mean, yeah, why don't you? Um, so I'm Joan Weigel. I live at 47 Chestnut, which is almost directly across the street from the Cooper's loading docks and right the first house on Chestnut from the pie bar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, it doesn't make sense for me to stand on that side. <laughs> Um, and so I think W E I G E L E. Um, and so you know, ever since the pie bar has been there, <laughs> chaos. Uh, and I think that we've pretty much given up on the idea that we'll be able to limit any kind of parking. But I think that trying to organize it a little bit. So there are several things. One is that right in front of my house, there is a sign that is when you come down Chestnut, right behind a small, currently leafy tree that probably people don't see at all. But it's a sign that faces you as you come down the street, says no parking anytime, and has an arrow that points towards my house. Nobody knows what that means. <laughs> it's a very, if, if it means I mean, I don't know what it means. I don't know where where on this little bit of, of, of street you're supposed to park between the two driveways. Not all of it because of the Cooper's trucks needing the space for backing in. And where the sign is to my neighbor's driveway is a really small space. You have to have like a mini or a smart car to actually fit in it. But everybody parks there and just sticks over the sign. But just what the sign means is confusing, and whether, I don't think there should be a sign there at all. I think the whole area, this little little park should be no parking. Because it really would only fit one car if there, you know, if there weren't a sign to allow the trucks to back into Cooper's. And, um, and it just, you know, it, it just creates, come, come sometime Tuesday mornings, and see when Cooper's gets the bulk of their deliveries, and especially their tractor trailer deliveries. God forbid we should ever need a fire truck to come down that street. Um, because it is lined with cars, it is lined with trucks. Uh, to, I mean, and there are other times too, but Tuesday mornings, like especially mid late morning, there's just no room. Um, a lot of the neighbors, myself included, are having problems with people just parking over, hanging over driveways, way too close to the ends of driveways. And so lining to make the, where the parking spaces are clear, I think would really help us out. And I, I'm not looking to restrict parking because I think it just pushes them into Coopers and enough of the Pi Bar customers park at Coopers anyway and take up their parking and you know it's not fair. Um, and so, but if we could just make it a little clearer where, where you can put your car and where you're 
blocking the neighbors and, and just making it difficult for everybody who lives on the street. That's all Thank I have you. to say. Would you like to speak as well? Yes, I would. Thank you. Um, Danielle Rayo. I live at 53 Chestnut Street. And still your last name is R A O. Yep. <laughs> Everybody makes it more complicated than it is. Uh, so yes, I totally agree with what she said. Uh, one more point is that the parking she's talking about in front of her house, when someone's parked there, if there's a line of cars at the light, it actually makes the road completely impassable. So you, you can't turn onto Chestnut Street because you can't get through. Um, and then there's the people who park illegally across from Cooper's lot as well, which causes that problem. Um, my house is pretty much a house where everybody parks right in front of, and people are parking, you know, overhanging my driveway all the time. I am the person calling the parking uh, office as well as the police constantly to complain about that. It's very hard for us to turn in and out of our driveway in that case because we, we have a line of cars on both sides and we can't even see people coming. Because of the way the Chestnut Street is where there's kind of a hill that comes down towards the bike path crossing and then towards the light at the intersection of Main Street, people fly down the hill trying to catch the green light and we're right there in the middle of it trying to see if cars are coming every time we pull out of our driveway. And it's, it's dangerous. There's a lot of people who are riding their bikes on the sidewalks now because <coughs> of parking in the way of the street and I don't blame them. But um, I can't actually see to the left out of my driveway because there's a fence there. So it's like so many things have to happen for me to get out of my driveway safely. It would be nice if there were some spaces that you know kept the parking kind of limited and spaced out, not right on top of our driveway, um, and just made it a little more visible. Because on the days when the parking is a little more spaced, it is easier to kind of see the traffic coming. But certain days, people are just squeezing in wherever and we're trying to like make these turns around them. Um, I don't know if you're considering parking on the other side of our street. Uh, I don't know what, if that's north? Then westerly. Westerly, okay. Uh, at the moment, parking is allowed and it doesn't happen that much anymore, but when things get bad, it does. And having cars parked on both sides of our street is ridiculous. Buses can't get through. Um, there's no sign saying that you can't, so people just do it. And technically, I did speak to somebody on this committee a couple of years ago. Uh, our street isn't technically wide enough for parking on both sides. So I think that might be a consideration to like, you know, to restrict parking on one side and have spaces on, on my side, on the easterly side, uh, with maybe time limits or something similar. Like me, uh, Middle Street seemed like it that work for those people there. So, I think that's it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Um, it, is it true that there's parking on both sides there of uh, Chestnut at that point? Yeah. I mean, we'll have to as far as I know, like not directly opposite my house at 47, there's a, that little stretch is, is but people park there all the time, especially when the Cooper's lot is full and like lawn care trucks are pulling up with their trailers so they pull over there and stop there. But from there down, like, you know, towards the bike path, I think, I think it doesn't have signage to say no parking. And so people do, do park there and then, again, you've got this very narrow road, and the, and the bus also goes down that street, the 44, um, every other hour, okay. or tries to. So I, I didn't realize that there was parking on the other side of the street. So, um, so this particular topic, um, I had a discussion with uh, Director Lascalia about this a bit, because it, it, it's it's starting to step into something that we don't seem to have a clear policy on at this point uh, that um, that when it comes to uh, line striping um, we, we have a number of things on the agenda that relate to this and but that um, there's uh, there's also a wilder place there's also a, a Grove Street where um, we're there are for those two places there's proposals to uh, move forward with line striping there 
and that um, that I I th you know and this discussion uh, also prompted by uh, Councillor Murphy uh, that the idea of line striping at this at this time we don't have any clear guidelines is how we're, we're going to move forward with this and uh, I think Councillor Sherrill last time when we were we were looking at this. Uh, for one of those particular situations, uh, that um, the, the lack of a clear guideline was coming up, and um, that my th my thought on this, and usually doesn't the chair speak last or something, but my thought on this is that um, that we we consider. Uh, a, taking the, the line striping ideas that we have today on the agenda to, um, to table them for a while because there's, there's a bigger discussion that needs to happen around where we're going to line stripe and where we're not. And um, so, that, uh, so that when people are coming to us, like these people today, that we have a clear um, checklist of things to go through, we can say yes, you are a good candidate for line striping or not. And um, so, but clearly there are cases where we, we should be considering it, like with, um, with Maple here, or no, Chestnut. Chestnut. Can, I, can I add something? Uh, we've already been through this about two years ago when this all started and nothing happened and then it got too cold to put any lines on the street. And it sounds like it's gonna drag <clears throat> on for the winter again if we wait much longer. I don't know if that's an important thing to consider. It's already been two years. Um. Um, I remember there being a discussion two years ago. I don't remember what the outcome was about. The outcome was that they were going to check the, uh, what is it called, the study that they did before any of this even started being a problem and then it never came up again, so I emailed Councillor O'Donnell several several times and never got a response. Well, we can uh, we can go back and look into that and figure out what um, what was going to be checked in on, unless John Hill is calling notes. I just wanted to note that something that you, you didn't mention, and this is a larger policy discussion to be had, yeah. um, because it's not just decision about whether or not something should um, should meet criteria for line striping. It's a it's a large, significant policy that is an impact on the DPW and their work and, and maintenance. So um, it is a larger discussion that needs to be had before yeah. we can make those decisions. How did it happen on Middle Street? That was, um, that went through this committee, I did before I was on this committee, but it I hates me as well. Yeah. Does anybody else remember? Or? And that was a very particular, I mean, that was a particular situation um, that had been going on with a business that had moved in there. I understand this is also pertains to a business. Well, they've had the us too, the um, medical yeah. building. Yeah. That was but also, I mean, you know, for more than two years, we've been dealing with this since this changed from a barber shop that only got one or two customers a half hour, hour to the pie bar where it's constant cars and employees parked right. there for 10 hours. And so, I mean, you know, we, you know, people cannot get in and out of their driveways who live on that section of Chestnut and have not been able to since the pie bar opened. Good. I just said that's very interesting. I, mean, I understand because we've got a very similar problem, the same, a similar time period. Nothing was really too bad on, on, on the other <coughs> place until uh, the contractor moved into the Cooper's Corner building, and I think the pie bar added a little bit and the, the new uh, Cumberland Farms, you, you got a lot, a lot of businesses there that either weren't there or weren't nearly as big before. And it, it became, particularly when the contractor moved in, it, became, it went from almost no problem to, a ma for us, a major problem. Another part up and down the street all day long, a lot of trucks, uh, so that's a problem. But also, whatever you do with policies about striping, I, I implore you to unstripe that parking parking space so is main street. Sure, we're going to get to your agenda item when when we're not on that agenda item. Yet. Okay, we will okay. discuss your but agenda. Item. But that pertains whatever to your policy but we're, is that needs to be I understand, get rid of. but we're not on that agenda item. Right, okay. Anyway, I I, I sympathize. <laughs> I understand. 
Yeah. So, so I I would like to make like to make a motion that we table this, and that uh, are, uh, and but that we um, that um, well, Director Lascalia, could you speak to this a little bit in terms of um, a, um, a, a, a some sort of line scraping policy, how how that might come about? And um, and um, what what sort of process we would need to go through? I, I think we have parking challenges all over the city mm -hmm. for many reasons. Some of the reasons are the roadway is too narrow for cars to be parked on both sides, or there are commercial establishments mixed with residential homes and that can create parking problems and visibility problems for people getting in and out of their driveway. There are multiple examples of this that have come up over the past, I would say, six to eight months where this commission hears of a problem on a particular street and the Henshaw Ave comes to mind and then we make a recommendation to restrict parking to one side of the road or the other and that restriction has unintended consequences of creating hardship for folks trying to get in and out of their driveway across from wherever parking is allowed because the radius is insufficient. And then that creates a bigger problem for us because we now have to either strike the roadway across from people's driveways, which creates kind of an ongoing maintenance thing for the city, or we have to actually create these piece by piece ordinances for across from your house and across from your house and across from your house and it's it there can be unintended consequences to trying to address parking on particular streets around the city and, and I use the Henshaw Avenue case as a classic example of that where that's sort of an ongoing conversation and it is an ongoing problem based on an action that this commission took so I am I, I understand the concerns of, of residents within the city, but I think this is a larger conversation of how we move forward and what we're asking the DPW to do as far as striping and maintaining that striping and drafting ordinances and then putting those ordinances on the book and how, what does enforcement look like for where we're striping and there is an ordinance that states you can't park outside the stripes, but who's actually enforcing that? So these are sort of bigger picture questions that need to be answered before we move forward and what I would say could, could be a way that would have unintended consequences. What's the nature of the maintenance issue that's created? Just when the lines wear off, they have to be repainted, is that it? Correct. Uh, uh, do you have any idea how long uh, they last? Eight to ten months. Really? That's it? I mean, they start to degrade. And of course, it depends on what the weather looks like. You know, it depends on how hard the plow is hitting it. You know, center lines wear more quickly than parking spaces do. But this is. We always have to be really cognizant that when the city installs any utility or any facility or any asset, it then becomes an ongoing maintenance issue. It, you know, it's an operations thing that the DPW then needs to handle on an ongoing basis. And we just paid $50,000 for double yellow center lines throughout the city, which you know, by April will be faded and we need to be striped again. So any thoughts on how we could create <coughs> criteria or guidelines or how, how we could... I think it's a larger position. That's not going to happen today. And actually, right, and perhaps I'm, over the winter when striping can't happen, right. that's a good time to really reserve time during this commission. 
and this would be the appropriate place to have that discussion. I, I guess, unless someone has further or different thoughts. Sure. Can I just make a suggestion? Um, since the law is three, you know, supposed to park three feet from a driveway. Instead of putting lines, can we just put signs? Please do not park within three feet of a driveway at, in these parts that are problems. Nobody knows that. And they just park like in front of our driveways. Is that, is that like a whole other thing that we'd be opening up? Um, I'd like to stick to this strike. Okay. Right. But it was a good idea. Okay. <laughs> it just seemed like a solution that wouldn't need maintenance. But I just I have a, a comment to address that if it would be helpful. You're not supposed to park, you know, within a certain distance of a fire hydrant either, and, and we don't typically flag that. It's sort of a known, you know, if we had to put a sign, you know, three feet on either side of every fire hydrant or or yeah, but it just from means it's immediate, like this the three driveways. This is a problem at in this area. That would save a lot of paint, <laughs> but everybody knows the fire hydrant one. Nobody knows the parking one, or understands it. <laughs> I'm just yeah, thank you. Takes my signs. We have the same problem. So I appreciate the need for policy, but since this looks like it's heading towards being tabled, and we were here for several months, two years ago, and we've been tabled before. Could I just ask, if you are going to table it, could you have some sort of end date to bringing it off the table and, and not just let it be on the table? And one of the things that happened two years ago was that there was more parking enforcement that came to Chestnut Street, especially around middle, midday. That seems to have slacked off. And now it's just up to the residents to always be calling to say, I can't get out of my driveway. There's a car blocking my driveway. Their cars are too close. Um, and then my third personal thing is, if somebody could take a look at that sign that says no parking and the arrow points to my house and try to make it make sense. Because it, to me, it just, A, it's right behind a leafy tree and nobody sees it, but it's angled so it points to my house. Um, so was that sign added at, uh, two years ago I thought I remembered that there was there was a sign like that was rusted and faded and uh -huh. bent yeah. and I think that this has replaced it but for Does some reason it instead of being parallel to the street so that the arrow goes the way I think it's supposed to go so that there's room for the bus to pull out and the trucks to pull in it was placed perpendicular to the street and it just says no parking anytime and points to and I don't know you know and I think it needs to be turned directly to the house. Look at, we can look at getting that turn. We'll look, so at, we'll look at your side. If you, could, if you could clarify that one, that would be great. Is that the one that's behind a tree? There's right. There's a little, very leafy tree. And so you come down the street, I think most people don't see it at all. It won't be leafy soon. So if you look at it soon, believe me, it's leafy. Um, but, you know, but I think, you know, one of the reasons sometimes we get, you know, two cars parked on that tiny little strip because I think people just don't see that sign at all. So in Councillor Murphy's request, it was for line striping there to indicate no parking. So putting some sort of grid because the sign often gets obscured by the tree and that's where the trucks need the space to back into. Right, and also to park three feet from the driveway next door and where between where that sign is, you really, you have to have a smart car or a mini. It doesn't fit a regular size car. It's a very small, it's like half of this area where the sign is. And so it, it, the whole thing makes no sense. And if you don't lay, leave room for the Cooper's trucks to park, to turn around, then, you know, you're, you're yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Director Lascalia, could we look at, uh, not just turning that sign, but potentially moving it a few feet closer to that driver. Yeah, we'll take a look at it. Thank you. But if you move it, oh, to and make it no, no parking, parking or to make it make it big enough for a car? No, to make it a larger space that's no parking. Then you're going to make it so that the trucks cannot park back into Coopers. The, the tractor trailer trucks cannot get into Coopers. And then because that's what they need, that's they need. That's why there, I think that's why there is 
that space, why it's not entirely parking in front of our house because the truck, I mean, the, when you, to see those tractor trailers pull into Cooper's, it's an art or it's a disaster, depending on who's driving. Right, but if a larger space is no parking, that's not helpful? Well, there wouldn't Oh, if it's no parking, parking, then if yeah. you. I thought you said to make it right. a, a larger parking, parking space. sign a little bit farther uh, away from Main Street. You, then there's no there's no room to park spot there at all. You have yeah. to you have to make it like entirely no parking. You That's what I'm have suggesting. To. You're no, both saying the same yes. thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the current sign is just one arrow and allows half of the space. Right. I can see that it's a very small space. Yeah. So why don't we just eliminate that very small space? There we go. Or look into doing that. So it would just be without the arrow, just no parking for that whole area. That, right. that I, would, would, I would imagine sense. that space doesn't is not large enough to actually be a parking space. Oh, no, so we can look at it. Right. Yeah. We'll look at it. We need to take some measurements. And Unless you have a smart scan, mini, what it looks like. Yeah, and that would help the whole problem with you know people sitting at the light and the whole road getting blocked um, right. on the other side of the road. So. Okay, we can do that. We can right. look at that. Um, so as far as this particular uh, uh, topic on the agenda here, um, uh, a way to move it forward. So you were saying that possibly this committee works on that over the next few months to come up with some sort of criteria or guidelines. Uh, so that we can figure out how to approach these different situations in the future. Yes. You want to make a motion? Um, you want me to do a motion it? for us to look at this? Okay. Yeah. I move for us to examine this over the, uh, the winter time. Okay. I'll second. Chief Casper seconds. Uh, any discussion on this motion? Would it make sense to have the DPW uh, do take some measurements and make suggestions as to where parking could be added, as in either signage or line striping, so that it could easily be rolled into an ordinance to, to write an ordinance? So that's, I or like that idea. It sounds like, like a separate motion. motion. From streets and such, and uh, you mentioned uh, Councilor Murphy talked about adding parking on Elm Street, and I was looking at Google Maps while well, the discussion is going on, and there are three blocks to the east mm -hmm. on Elm Street on the same side of the street as Pi Bar, but there are some driveways, at least one on each, well, at least one on two of those blocks. So it would raise issues for the people who live in those houses. So you'd have to be very specific about where you could fit in spaces. If you took the driveways out and say you could fit 21 spaces, right? Seven. 77 or 776 possibly or you had the drivers in now you're talking about maybe five five and six or something like that but i think it would be really useful for this committee rather than to just have a discussion about where we might add parking is to have some criteria that we could discuss you just you measured it you think there's places for five spaces four spaces three spaces sign here sign here sign here then we have something that we could really discuss well, and we can do that on a case-by-case -case basis, yeah. but any sort of general policy around that, like, you know, you can't park this close to a fire hydrant, is, would be an A in this particular yeah. scenario. Yeah, I mean, hopefully that kind of stuff wouldn't be an issue. We don't put up signs for fire hydrants. I, I'll just be consistent and say that um, my preference would be that we come up with sort of a global policy before asking the DPW to do significant work. Can I restate what Gary said? I just don't think I'm smart enough to know what matters to the DPW. So with the streets, you know, just some general things that we should think about. So I agree, you can't measure where you don't know where, you, it, it's site specific. But what does matter if we're trying to do a line policy might be the width of the street, how long is a parking space, how wide does it have to be, just the things that we should think about that I think, frankly, I don't know until I'm sort of in the discussion with, with the DPW. So that's the guidance I'd like is just, you know, um, what would matter to the discussion? What, what matters to you? And of course, maintenance, I get that. Um, 
but I think also what um, what we would need to think about to make a policy to make sense. We can provide some general points for consideration. Okay. So we're still discussing a motion for this committee to over the winter to uh, work to create criteria for where we line strike. Any more discussion on this? Okay. Um, uh, is uh, all in favor of this motion say aye. 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 Uh, any abstentions? <coughs> any nays? Okay, we will be working on that over the winter. And, um, and also that um, uh, DPW will be out to look at that sign and Thanks. see, look at, uh, yeah, it does look, there's unusually small looking parking space there that probably shouldn't be there because I think they need to be, how long is the parking space? Length is 20 feet? It's not 18 to 20 feet. 18 to 20 feet, and it looks like there's about 14 right there. So anyway, so they will take a look at that. They just say one other thing from our being here the last time, the one thing that did happen was that somebody did go out and look at near the bike path area, which is very dangerous because it's down in this, where two hills come down mm -hmm. and with all the cars that were then lining the street right up to the um, to the crosswalk for the bike path, it, it was impossible for people to see people on the bike path entering that. As a result, it did get some yellow triangles put. And I personally feel like they should go a little further back, but you know, but it, there is more of an area. It is a bit safer, and I just really appreciate that happening. However, that came out of those discussions that that was a positive thing that happened from being here before. Um, and I think it really did make things a bit safer in the area of that bike path crosswalk. So thank you for that. Okay, thank you. Um, Can I, am I understanding that the parking space at, on Main Street at the juncture of Wilder Place and Main Street, is that a separate agenda item? That would need to be a separate agenda. Is, is it a separate agenda item today? Uh, yeah, not today. They, they, what? I believe it's addressed and the map that the DPW has supplied. Why don't we skip to that? Let's go to Wilder Place. Yeah. So we've okay. completed discussion of line scraping. Now we're on to Wilder Place. That is item number letter G. Okay, and for this, there's there's two documents. There's a proposed ordinance to uh, limit parking to the uh, to prohibit parking on the. Uh, westerly side of the street and to allow parking on the easterly side of the street at a point 45 feet northerly of Main Street in Florence. So roughly it, um, that is if you're you're heading up Wilder Place um, on the right hand side by the edges that run along where Cooper's is that will be um, no parking on either side and then uh, after 45 feet, and I think that's when you reach the first residence, yeah, that's okay. that that's, that's parking on that side will start for the, the rest of the street. And that's the ordinance that's before us today. We also have a line striping uh, diagram, which we've already talked about how, how we're going to move forward on line striping. Um, uh, what do you, you want to point to? Trying to draw your attention to. Uh, oh, there's the remove the first parking. Thank you. I missed that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Um, so additionally, it calls to remove that space that the gentleman's oh, to on Main Street. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's first do the ordinance because they're actually two different things. It, it was, let's go. So I can just provide some context here. It was it was asked of us that we look at this road and determine which side parking would be appropriate on and which side it wouldn't be appropriate on. It was also asked of us that we look at this parking spot on Main Street, which we did. And it was also asked that we provide a diagram of possible 
parking spots. So we have we have done all of these things. And thank you for doing that. We appreciate it. Me too. I think. And so after doing all of these things, what we talked about last time is that we don't encode parking spots into the ordinance. So what the ordinance is stating is only where parking is prohibited, not where it is allowed. So what the ordinance is stating is that on the westerly side of Wilder Place, there is no parking. And then, it, and then the second line of the ordinance um, restricts parking on Main Street as you have requested, 45 feet. Um, so with that being said, if we're tabling the parking space conversation, what's in front of us is the ordinance to restrict the parking. Though I will say that if you look at the diagram that we provided on the east side, there's also no parking from Main Street to a point 45 feet northerly. And what we were trying to do is open that intersection right up so you had more increased visibility. So we would actually need to amend this ordinance to restrict that parking if we weren't going to strike it immediately. Does that make sense? So could this be accomplished by putting no parking? So where you have it painted no parking area, sort of in the middle of the block, if you had no parking from here to here sign there, and then you had a no parking sign um, to that point 44 feet northerly from Maine, would that usually we put this Usually we put the signs up as a result of an ordinance. Right. I'm just saying, if even if we if we amended it to put those signs to put signs up without striking this, do you feel like it would accomplish? I, I think it boils down to an enforcement issue. I don't know what the capability. I mean, we can put signs anywhere, and then there's such thing as visual clutter, and you know, there's signs everywhere, and is anyone actually obeying them? So I don't know what the capability of parking enforcement is to be in this area to actually enforce that. Yeah, stuff. Yeah, but the point of that is that you would be saving the uh, maintenance of line striping. I think that's what you're getting at, right? Right. And would it be adequate? I mean, like, you still have to have enforcement of line striping. So that's a, that's a wash. I mean, do we think that people would obey the parking that we're looking for with just the signs? Think about every driveway. So you're gonna be putting up signs, not your driveway. Kind of goes back to the other. Signs, you know, parking. Mm-hmm. Meaning piecemeal or. Yeah, that wasn't what I was suggesting. I was. Um, I, I know for this like, yeah. this area right here. Yeah, that we just sort of mark that. that. Go forward. There's, I, I actually understand the visual aesthetics thing about signs, and I, I'm not too thrilled about the idea of like signs all down the street, but the first 45 feet that goes to the first house, from our point of view, there is no visual aesthetics there at all because anything could go there because it's just a kind of a commercial open, you know, nobody's looking at that except people driving in. I, we as residents wouldn't be paying any attention to that. Uh, up to 45 feet in. So once you put signs beyond that, the visual aesthetics get involved. But before that, I don't think so. It's just like it's just kind of a tacky little stretch there as you enter the street. So that's my two cents on that. So I think I actually described it wrong. Oh, and I'd like you to just come understand. up here and look at this diagram okay. real quick. Did you come up and just? Oh, sure. So parking allowed along this side of the street, yeah, that's my side, yeah. and then no parking here the rest of the way. Oh, it took 45 feet to right here. No parking, which which side of that? Are you talking on about parking at start? On your that? side of the street. The, so it, it actually starts partially down the, the street from uh, by Cooper's here, not the entire way. So right about there. Uh, are we, we're just looking at the Main Street parking here. Here's Main Street. 
here's Cooper's, here's your street. I don't know. Oh, that's CC Waller was there. This is why this is Waller. Okay, all right. So no parking for 45 feet there? And this is the 45 feet right here. To the, to the first house. Feet. But no, the, the first house is here. Oh, not even to the first house. Okay. Not even to the Yeah, that's probably good because you, if you eliminate it all the way to the first house, they would just be coming in even more mm -hmm. down the way. So, so you're saying there is parking from there, the rest of the wild place on that right, side? Right, on that side of the street. That's the proposal. Okay. So it's just north of the hydrant. North of the hydrant. North of the hydrant. Okay, my, 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 and that's fine. I understand that. Uh, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, and I think we're. I thought forty. I figured we're going all the way to the first house. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you, you should actually. It's probably you need those few places before right. you get to the house. My only comment about that is that for us, it won't change much because the only people who tend to park on the other side of the street are res residents, like the mother visits her daughter. And, that sort of thing. For the most part, people just driving down the street don't park on the other side of the street. It's usually just a resident that seems to think they need to park there. So, and that's only occasionally. So, basically, that's going to leave the parking on our side of the street kind of where it is now, because that's what they do now. But you'll have enforcement now in terms of because right now people are allowed to park on both sides of the street. So technically, that's and, right. the, and that's it'll be marked with signage saying. That, um, yeah, it's a it, it's a little better, but it's still going to let we're still going to get bumper to bumper stuff on the right side of the street, which is what we have now. And they're getting too close to the driveways, and we still have that. So if there's no if there's no uh, markers for where they park, they'll still be lined up. But I also agree this over here with the signs. I don't care for the signs on Center Street or whatever the street is nearby, where they have signs practically every residence has a sign. I don't really like that too much, frankly. But um, our problem is they just cram it too tight. Somebody over here said that a standard parking place is what, 18 to 20 feet or something? When we got out and measured, uh, my neighbor and I, a few months ago, you, 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 they, even if they pump, if they park bumper to bumper, if there are trucks, if, if, and a lot of times they are, you really can't, you're pushing that three feet limit on both, both ends. The well, that, that's where this line striping proposal that's right. might be. That, that's right, and that's right. And so, exactly right. So we're, we're thinking along those lines. Okay. And, um, okay. so, Thank you. Um, not it. Um, Nancy's back in the room. Um, in terms of, and we had this discussion, uh, I believe, yesterday, that in, uh, in terms of enforcement, when things are striped, things are easier for, are more clear for enforcement? Well, Is that your experience? When, when you have a marked parking space, um, then you have the ordinance kick in that states that you have to park your vehicle. When there is a marked parking space, mm -hmm. you have to park your vehicle solely within that marked parking space. So without the, the markings, then the vehicle isn't restricted, just so long as it's not more than 12 inches from the curb. Or three feet from a driveway. Or three feet from a driveway or 10 feet from a fire hydrant. There's a lot of measurements that come into effect. But the main thing with a marked space is that they must park within that marked space. So now you have that enforcement tool. That would be very helpful. And otherwise they can't enforce it. Nobody's going to enforce the three feet. Nobody's going to come down there and enforce that three um, feet. Actually, it is enforced. Right. Not on our street. Uh, uh, maybe not specifically yeah. referring to your street, but well, it is general. an ordinance that is enforced. Yeah, no, no, no I believe it. I believe that. But not on our street, I can tell you. Okay. Yeah. So, um, one more thing, Nancy. In terms of in, that, um, the when when there is line striping, and from the enforcement perspective, does that clarify things? Are there less um, violations when that occurs so I'd like for example I my understanding from Councillor Murphy is that on Middle Street it really clarified things and and, and far fewer complaints um, is is that your experience that when light when we have line striping for parking yes when there are, when there are actual designations where you can park as opposed to giving the ticket after the fact mm -hmm. 
say you can't park here. Um, it's it is much much better. Okay. There's far fewer. So, and I think that's part of the dynamic that we're going to have to be weighing out over the <coughs> next few months here. So, um, so we have we have a proposed ordinance on the table here, and um, <coughs> would somebody like to make a motion around uh, this ordinance for Wilder Place. Well, that, that actually is part of the line striping. The other, uh, the proposed parking line striping piece. So we have two things here. We have the ordinance, which is, which is uh, Director Lascali has pointed out, is eliminating parking on the westerly side of the street on Wilder, and then we we can uh, talk about that line striping piece. Or we could add. The elimination or the creation of a no parking zone on Main Street to this ordinance and just black up the. Okay. I, I am in uh, my proposal to include the elimination of parking place on Main Street. Okay. Right. That could be done with a sign, just like it would, will be done on Wilder Place, right? Except there's parking striping there now. Right, so the straight. We just we'll just black it out. Okay, so we have an amendment to add the um, the elimination of the parking space on Main Street um, on the northerly side of Main Street to the west of the entrance to Wilder Place. Dimensions given on some on one of those things, so it's uh, from the <coughs> side of wider space, 45 feet long, maybe something like that. Some that that makes it really clear. Yeah, it's written into the ordinance. Okay. Where so, are we on this motion? Was well, I think we need a second. Second. Okay. <laughs> uh, any more discussion? Okay. All in favor of. Wilder Place eliminating and eliminating that parking space on Main Street. Say aye. 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 Uh, any abstentions? Any nays? Okay. That piece is done. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. On to the next thing. Uh, discussion of 18.123, an ordinance to amend Chapter 3.3. 312-110 of the code book, parking change for Strong Avenue. So, um, I'd like to give you a little overview of what's going on here. Um, thank you. So, um, the, uh, several years ago, the city did a parking study um, and we uh, developed a parking plan uh, to, uh, to uh, change you know, we talked about it earlier in the meeting today, increasing the downtown uh, parking time from one hour to two hours on Main Street. Uh, for the, the um, parking lots that surround downtown, um, such as the Armory Street parking lot, um, the, the plan was to extend parking there from two hours to three hours. Um, that for all of, for those other downtown lots, uh, that, um, 
change has happened already. This particular lot, the Strong Avenue lot, which is uh, where Eastside Grill is, um, uh, that is the last of the downtown lots to have this, this change to three hours. Um, that, uh, interestingly, the, um, the new kiosk is already in place and people are, can purchase, they can now park there for, the, the meter is already there um, due to the delays we had with the quorum uh, that we want to be able to put our stamp on this today and move this forward to council on Thursday. Um, but it is in, uh, uh, lines up with, with, the, with the parking plan that we've been slowly rolling out over the last few years. Um, Okay. Any more discussion on this? Hmm? That was Gary. Okay. No more discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, any nays? Any abstentions? Okay. Moving along. Uh, Thank you. Discussion of 18.173, an ordinance to, uh, ordinance to chapter 312-36 of the code book, proposal to increase fees at EJ Gare parking garage. Um, so, the currently the parking fee in the garage is 50 cents an hour. After the first hour, uh, this uh, change would uh, increase the rate to 75 cents an hour after the first hour. Uh, this is in, uh, again, it's, um, it, it aligns with the parking plan. The consultant actually uh, had originally suggested a higher rate and that we skip the, the free hour. They were hoping we would go to a dollar an hour starting and, and, and eliminate that first free hour. Um, that uh, the, I, I spoke to the mayor around today around a uh, rollout of this. He, um, um, he is planning to meet with the newspaper to talk about this change. Um, he's, uh, so that more people will hear about it, um, rather, you know, that they hear about it ahead of time through other sources than getting to the kiosk and paying the new fee. Um, that he has spoken with the uh, owners of Thorns, and they are supportive of this change, and that um, uh, thus far he hasn't heard of anything that where you know that people pushing back and um, and and not in support of this change. Um, so that this uh, proposal is on the this ordinance is on the floor here. Um, would like to talk about it. Is this still the least expensive parking that's not long-term parking downtown at 75 No? No, the, the long-term parking lots are less. Right, so, but that's not other than the long-term parking. Right, but of course this is covered. Right, Just still a pretty good bargain. Right. First half, right. Right. Is this viewed as Revenue raising measure or parking regulation measure? This, I, in my discussion with the mayor, it is a revenue raising ma measure, and it ha it relates to the fact that with the the changes where in uh, where we are now uh, uh, using we have the credit card kiosk, which we we're not drawing in the same amount of revenue that we were before when people were just paying cash. There's a fee every time someone uses a credit card that we have to pay. Um, but all parking revenue goes back into the parking system. It doesn't go to the general fund. Well, the, the fee for the credit card is, what, a couple percent? We just learned at council the other I mean, it's, it's multiple thousand dollars a month. It adds up to that. Well, it adds up, I suppose, because it's a lot of money. But in terms of percent, this is raising it by 
um, 50 percent, but the charge for a credit card is nowhere remotely close to that. So that couldn't very well justify raising it by 50 percent. On the same token, if you raise it to 54 cents, which would be the percentage maybe that it's you know, it, that wouldn't make sense either. I, right. To me, the compromise of going 75 cents as opposed to a dollar seems really reasonable. I don't think anyone's going to, well, there'll be people that will complain about that, but in terms of uh, access to decent parking, it's a low price. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think the, um, for these small transactions, I think the fees are higher than a few percent. It might be like a minimum charge. I don't know what it is. First hour on? free too. That's right. That is, that is a very nice uh, feature. It's a lot of fifty-four minute excursions to out of town. <coughs> Pick up the pizza. Uh, just, just to note the uh, the only cost that we would incur for implementation of the change is some new signage and reprogramming software. Uh, there's, there's really no cost, right? Part of all this stuff is about turnover, too, isn't it? I mean, maybe not at the parking garage, but I mean, fee structures are designed to encourage turnover. Where it's the most convenient to park there, that's where you want to pay it. Shorten the time distance and pay it a higher fee. Otherwise, you're going to be building parking spaces all over the place, which I don't know if it's just striping city streets, which is inexpensive, but the maintenance issue. Any more discussion? Would somebody like to make a motion on So I move that we approve an ordinance for chapter 312-36 of the code book of proposal to increase the EJ gear parking garage to reflect the first hour free and the second hour priced at 75 cents an hour. A second recommendation. Okay. Um, and $20 for lost ticket. That's not a change. Oh, it's not? That's current, yeah, that's the current. I found out the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no exceptions. <laughs> no. So, uh, any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, any uh, nays? Any abstentions? Okay, that passes unanimously. Uh, the next thing on the, the agenda is uh, item E, the taxi. Uh, taxi language revisions. Uh, we actually don't have that. We we don't have those in a form today that I think would be helpful for discussion. So I'm going to table that till next time. I was uh, I am working with um, uh, City Solicitor uh, Seawall to get everybody that um, I can tell you that uh, Chief Casper and I and uh, my colleague. Uh, Councillor Shara and uh, Director Lascalia all met, and uh, we think we've come up with uh, some language that uh, should be helpful, and um, we'll roll that out next month. So, um, this discussion of uh, item F, discussion of a parking zone change on Grove Avenue across from number 77 and number 82. So the proposed ordinance, this is on Grove Avenue up in Leeds, um, that um, we would prohibit parking on the westerly side from Evergreen Road to the end of the street, the dead end, and um, on, the, on the easterly side, um, their parking would be prohibited, prohibited from a point 120 feet northerly of Evergreen Road. Um, 
I wish we had the overheads going. I tried to get those going today for everybody, but I wasn't able to do that. But do people have diagrams in their packets to look at? No. Okay. All right, pretty good. Um, so the um, so basically what we're we're doing is on we're prohibiting parking on the westerly side. Um, and we're allowing it on the easterly side. Um, that again, thank you to DPW for providing two different uh, items today. Uh, one of them is the proposed ordinance uh, to ban parking on one side of the street. The other is a diagram of possible line striping, um, as we requested last month, and um, that. Um, so I'd like to take these items separately. Um, do we have a motion for the ordinance to prohibit parking? No. All right, a second. Second. Jamie, a second. Um, any discussion? Okay. All in favor of the of uh, what's the ordinance number? Oh, it doesn't have the number. I have a question. I'm sorry. Three so this ordinance doesn't one. include the line striping. Is that right? One, two, dash. Because that's one. a separate matter. Sorry. Sure. Yeah, for ordinance uh, for three one two dash one zero two. Um, any any uh, any more discussion on this? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any, um, any nays? Any abstentions? Okay, so that passes unanimously. Now we get to the, to the line striping again. And um, that, uh, that I, you know, I, we're, we're, I think we need to make a motion to table this again. Uh, along with the other uh, line striping proposal um, based on the idea that we're, we're going to do this criteria guideline discussion. So um, does it matter that the first 120 feet could be dealt with just like the west side? It was. I think that was in the ordinance. Oh, wait. Oh, uh, what? So we're... So the remaining issue only has to do with the rest of the uh, east side, not the first 120 feet. Right. I'm sorry, I'm not understanding my question. Well, now. did we already adapt just a few feet, a few minutes ago, the first 120 feet prohibition on parking? Yes. Yes. That yes. was part of the ordinance. That's already. That will will have signs going up for that. Um, so, in terms of the uh, the line striping, um, should we move forward with that today, or did we just decide to table? Those? Well, we we've done this. To, you know, I I would suggest that we, we table it, but this. But we do have this item here that somebody could make a motion on it. We could discuss it and decide whether or not to move forward with it. I think it makes sense to take it on together. Seems to be more of a policy issue to me. If nothing else because of the maintenance required. So would you like to make a motion to that effect that we table it until we have the, the criteria sure, discussion? Yes. Okay. Um, I'll second that motion to table it. Thank you. All right, uh, any more discussion? All right, um, all in favor of tabling this, say aye. 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 Um, any nays? Any abstentions? Okay. That was my one last question for Wilder Place. The striping on Wilder Place has been tabled for the policy discussion that we're talking yes. about? Yes. Okay. Thank you again. And feel free to contact us. Yeah. So you'll just keep talking about it through the window. 
Yeah, we'll, we will figure it out. Okay, I was just trying to figure out the striking is going to wait for the policy. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, yes. Well, you know, all right, uh, item H, discussion of line striping for parking on Fruit Street. This one's a little different in that um, last we left off around the Fruit Street uh, uh, traffic calming application, one of the last items that we wanted to talk about had to do with uh, line striping for parking on Fruit Street. And um, uh, Director Pomerantz, I think, had some information on that. Um, that true? Or did I put you on the spot? <laughs> no. um, been my twin, but now it wasn't me. Um, Nancy, was there? I think there was there was some discussion about there might be some money for this, so, or so it, it was just my understanding that it had been brought up that the question was who was going to paint those the parking spaces if they were um, agreed to and whether it was going to be parking maintenance because it fell within the downtown business district or whether it was going to be the DPW and that that's where it was left and I hadn't heard anything beyond that. Sorry, I'm just blanking on this answer. Okay. Okay. So would, wouldn't this fall under the, the whole line striking discussion then? Well, I guess it could. Um, the It predated the line striping discussion and it had to do, we, we, were, we were on the verge of closing the Fruit Street application and this last piece came, a question was raised as to whether uh, there was money budgeted and um, Ms. Forrestal felt there was some money budgeted and there was discussion that this last thing might be happening around line striping parking on Fruit Street. I'll call you ahead of time next time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're just blank on this. Okay. Um, I, I think this is really part of a larger conversation and, you know, paint is very inexpensive. It's right. the time to do it and the time to maintain it that becomes problematic. So it's difficult to just look at it in terms of budget sometimes. Um, it, it also has to be looking at, looked at for staffing. I think one of the things that'll be really helpful for this commission is we need to have an understanding of where parking spots are actually striped. What, where is this current, where are they currently? Why are they that way? Right. And how far, you know, if it is just in the central business district, where else is it other than that? And if so, do we know why? Although that might not be as important because we just need to move forward with some sort of consistency. So I think that's one of the things that we need to, that, that DPW will bring to the table the next time we have a discussion about this. Um, that I think all the line striping should really fall under this umbrella of a future discussion. I'll make a motion to do that for the Fruit Street striping discussion to table up until our it's going to be a robust conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll second that. Okay. Any more discussion on that? Okay. All in favor of tabling this till some future meeting, say aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstentions? Okay. We are on to item I, discussion of the crosswalk at Live 155. Uh, I believe it was Chief Casper wanted this on the agenda. And um, and I think we touched on it a while ago, um, maybe at our September meeting. Sounds about right. Okay, and um, so you, if yeah. I remember your concerns were that um, that the the uh, raised intersection area was was not clearly defined enough for pedestrians and cars to figure out who had the right of way. Yeah, I think it's an unfamiliar street structure, and drivers, cyclists, and walkers don't know how to use it, and therefore it causes confusion. And just confusion on a very busy street, very busy street. So 
it was brought to my attention by uh, someone who works in that area who looks out her window every day and is concerned about what she sees out there. Um, and actually another person brought it up to me as well. So I brought it forward to the commission as a point of discussion. Uh, it is something that's unique. Uh, we've probably all driven over it or crossed on it somehow, and it is a little bit odd. Uh, people are kind of crossing diagonally, and drivers are unsure of what it is. So I, I, I don't, I hate to even bring up the word line painting now, but it seems like <laughs> what would be helpful for it is to have it in some way marked that would be consistent with the crosswalk with some white striping on it. That would be my thought, but I'm, I'm not a DPW, so whatever the DPW's recommendation, recommendation would be, I, I'm sure I would support. Um, I just recognize it as a point of minor confusion over there. And, and niche, niche engineering looked at this, they were the engineers who actually designed this raised crosswalk, and they did not recommend further striping. They felt that it would add to the confusion because you have sort of a non-traditional, which I guess is the issue, crosswalk okay. anyway. And then to stripe on top of that is, is going to become very visually problematic. Um, we had sort of batted around the idea of, of putting those pedestrian, those in street pedestrian signs, you know, kind of in the middle of that, but I think those would probably get knocked down quickly and we would certainly try it and see what happens. But I think with the with the heavy truck traffic through there. But that taken out pretty quickly. I, think. Yeah, I don't think yeah. it would take long, and that becomes more of a hazard than anything. Mm -hmm. right. yep. um, okay. I mean, there's there's a lot of signage around that crosswalk. So much signage. Yeah, it's yeah. so busy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot of signage. And I think the signs are appropriately installed at seven feet or whatever it is. But I, for as a pedestrian or a cyclist, uh, I don't know that they look up and see those, and, and they're um, yeah. I, I, it's a it's a new item in the street. Pleasant Street has a lot of new items on it. There's a lot of strange things going on over there. I think it's awesome, and I'm a walker and a biker myself. But there's a lot of new things to take in and learn how to operate around, um, and that's certainly one of them. But if the recommendation is as good as it is, then yeah. I'd like to see what this looks like. Yeah. If we're about to pave it, yep, and then it'll be striped after that. You know, not the crosswalk, but the actual roadway mm -hmm. and. That may help. Maybe we should, you know, once it's actually refreshed and everything is brand new, it might be more apparent what's going on there. Mm -hmm. So it might just be something we want to look at over the next, you know, month as this project winds down, and then say, is this still horrible? And if so, what's a good solution? Right. I can keep an eye on it over the winter and springtime and see if there's more complaints or concerns brought from there, and if there are, I can re-bring it up to the commission. I think it's going to pop more with the new pavement. Mm -hmm. um, has there been any accidents reported there, or no? It's it's the you know the near misses. <laughs> Those accidents are harder to count. <laughs> right, right. So uh, yeah, that's all, that, and it was reported to me through people just saying they feel like it's confusing there. So well, maybe it'll be less confusing as people drive over it more, and more of them pop up um, over time in other communities as well. So. Okay. Sorry. Um, the triangles that sometimes you put before, you know, not the crosswalk stripes that you were referring to, but as you approach the crosswalk, a couple of triangles in the lane of travel. I, I don't want to make a proposal. I'm just saying that's another alternative to the crosswalks that could be thought about if you go to them and see if it doesn't, doesn't do it. I've actually never been sure what those are for. Maybe Thank I don't. You. But <laughs> what what are those triangles? Are they called alert, sharks alert teeth? You, yeah, they're called sharks teeth, and yeah. it's to alert you that there's yeah. something different happening in that lane. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yield, yield. I thought it was pointing me which direction to drive. Yeah, <laughs> 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 might just add to the confusion. Good, yeah, I think. <laughs> I, 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 it definitely makes you drive slow. <laughs> I, I think that's part of the strategy. As a motorist, if you're not sure what you do, you slow down. And so, then you see pedestrians in your home. Yeah, my greater concern is just for the pedestrians who are, right. are who are counting on drivers to stop for them. Right. They, yeah, they, they, I think you're right. The confusion for a pedestrian is maybe I shouldn't go. Right. The confusion right, right. for a motorist is I should slow down. So mm -hmm. it, that's an argument works. for creating more confusion. Okay, exactly. <laughs> I, I would call it crossing plaza. Make it look like it. it's you. Crossing plaza. <laughs> <laughs> First one in the state.
Well, on the theme of creating more chaos, is there any new business? Uh, just, just to go back to the whole line scraping discussion, so sure. it's not new business, but do we want to set, certainly give Donna and her staff enough time to draw some information together, so maybe look at the January or February meeting as the point where we'll have that robust discussion? Uh, so at least it's in our minds to be thinking about it two months out. Sure. Yeah. And are we gonna are we expecting a like a presentation on this topic so we learn more about it? Is that the hope that we'll learn more about it and then that we come out of with some sort of guidelines that would be able to apply to future? Yeah, I think what what we will do is we will promote we will provide the commission with considerations. You know, sort of a bullet point list of considerations. Um, and then as I mentioned, I I would want to have a little time to figure out exactly where we have parking spots, spots, straight, and what the rationale was behind that. Nancy, is that something that you information that you have, or no? You don't have like a designation of like you do the straight versus the. No. Okay. That's, and, I, and it's not going. To, it's certainly not going to be an inventory. Right. Uh, this yeah. is going to be, and, and it's not going to be a, a presentation. that's going to be, you know, I'm going to run down a bullet point list and say, you know, generally speaking, here is where parking spots are striped, and we don't have a lot of outliers, or we do have some outliers, and here they are. Um, that we need a little time to figure out where those locations are. But it's certainly not going to be a thorough. Uh, yeah. um, if we can help you in any way pulling that together, let us yeah. know. Um, and if visuals would help, you know, then we can help with getting some images of like you know, examples of where parking is striped and not striped. Let us know. And I know that um, Brian from Parking Maintenance um, does restripe parking spots in the downtown business district in certain areas, so that's also another area. So I just think what's important for us to understand is, is this something that is 95% confined to central business of Right. Yeah, I, I want to thank DPW for all the work that they do for this committee. Sometimes it feels like we send work to DPW, they bring stuff back and we kind of say thank you and we figure out whether it passes muster and passed it on. So um, so thank you. And also that um, one of the things that will be coming down the pike is the uh, revised traffic calming manual. I, 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 there's been a lot of work going on uh, over at DPW to expedite things. So um, I wanna thank DPW for all the work. Um, is there any new business? Yay. <laughs> so uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do I have a second? A second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 aye.